So we are 10 seconds in. Um, today is slightly different than my normal uh, crafting stuff. Today is actually going to be putting together a wire um, set of sort of shelves. Uh, they're technically supposed to be like hung up in a closet, but I'm not going to be doing that. Instead, they're going to be going on the uh, dresser that my, not dresser, uh, bookshelf that my plants are on. And the goal is to keep a certain kitten from climbing up onto where my plants are and, uh, well, being a kitten and destroying plants. So, um, Kit is from, uh, as my friends would put it, Big River. This is one of the shelves put together, but I haven't actually connected anything. So there's special connectors I'm supposed to use. Um, okay, so, yeah, see, if you don't use the connectors, that's what happens. One of the things come free. Okay, so, short screws, long screws, there's screw anchors if you're going to uh, attach it to a wall. I am not. It's just going to sit on something that bag of parts. Mostly it's going to be me putting these together and then chatting with you guys while I, I will be uh, turning the uh, laptop so you all can see where my uh, plants are. I don't think I'm going to need... I don't even know what those are for. Okay, so we use the short screws to... Uh, it says fix the basket. So I'm assuming they go in the little spots that will keep the basket pieces together. But, but here's the thing. I don't... I get it. Maybe. Maybe I get it. I think. Do this short screw. That's not a short screw. That's a clippy thing. Okay, big head screw to connect each basket. So there's a different type of screw in here. Now, I am not seeing any short screws. Um, seeing lots of the big head screws, which I figured out what those are for, so that's good. I like when I can figure things out. It's just annoying when they mention a part that they don't actually include. Okay, so this is how they come before we put them together. Fairly simple process, though. You get the thing and you unfold it because it comes so this is the top right here the the bottom of it once it's done this is the front which i'm going to have facing toward the window to get my plants as much light as possible uh, while also keeping the kitten out so you unfold it from beneath then do this that which you can clip the pieces together and as long as you clip them in correctly then you end up with something that is nice and nice and sturdy and stable. Now I'm going to put it on top of the one that was already assembled. And this is where those big head screws come in. Now am I supposed to put them on the inside or the outside? I'm going to assume they go in from the outside because that's where the washer is, is on the inside. So let's go ahead and get first of those in. And for the moment, I'm just going to finger tighten these. Um, anytime you're putting something together that requires like screws or things like that, uh, you should always finger tighten only first because that way you don't make it so tight that when you do uh, if you do eventually need to take it apart, you realize, oh, crud, I screwed that up, I messed that up, whatever. Um, you have the option to take it apart more easily than if you had really 
tightened everything down to the point you have to go get a power screwdriver to get it out, or worse, you risk actually uh, stripping the screws that you were using. So you don't... I'm doing the stream. Okay. I was checking to see why the hot light was on and it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. It was this one. Okay. So you want to make certain that you uh, just finger tighten when you're first starting out. Um, that's one of those things I picked up from uh, actually my dad, one of the few bits of handy tool using type advice that he gave me. Um, because in his view, I would never have to use tools because, well, we're going to leave the misogyny right there. So, uh, but yeah, finger tighten before you commit to anything. Well, and I suppose finger tighten before you commit to anything doesn't quite work because, you know, what if you're committing to marriage? You can't really... F well, I guess you could, depending on the... Uh, depending on if it's... A, well, anyway, let's not be uh, crass. Too crass, at least. I enjoy being crass sometimes, but uh, not right now. This is my stream, and especially for a crafting stream, I try to keep it relatively family-friendly. Relatively. This one does not want to line up upright. That's part of why we finger tighten, is so that if the other spots need adjustment, we have that option available to us. In my case, I'm working on this on a bed. It would probably be uh, easier, better, or whatever, to work on a proper tool bench or table. Uh, but I still haven't completely rescued my crafting space, so we're still crafting from the bed. Not sure if this really counts as crafting so much as, you know, just... And that one just really does not want to go in. I'm going to have to use a screwdriver for that one. There's also a buff bird piece of metal. Okay. I'll worry about that later. So, this is three tiers. The goal, since it does have those nice wire uh, bases, is once I've got everything put together and set up, I will be... Um, pardon. Uh, once everything is put together and set up correctly, I will be attaching grow lights to the bottoms of the shelves. And that way, ah, okay, so this is the very top shelf. Go figure. I'm glad I didn't put it in the middle. So this is our next one. Let's dump out those. So there are different ways that you can do these um, as it is ma made to be done. So there's two uh, things that can be hooked from, to the sides, um, and they then go over a, uh, I just lost words. That happens frequently. It's been happening a lot at work, and it worries me some, but um, today I'm expecting to lose words because I did not take one of my meds, uh, because I'm almost out, and I'm trying to ration it so that I have enough to use when I do go back to work on Sunday. Um, but, yeah, the, uh, one of them hangs over a, uh, the thingy you hang your clothes on in the closet. That thing, that rod. It 
it's not a clothesline. Clothesline is where you put your clothes to dry. So I'm at a loss on what that word is. Maybe it's, maybe there's not a specific word for it, but I kind of doubt that because the English language uh, does not like for things to not have a name or specific word. We find a word. We make a word. Um, so, come on, you. The other way that these can be done is you can use multiple of these and hang them up separately. Um, of course, I'm not doing either of those options, but those are what it's meant to be done with. And then, of course, they've got the uh, screws and screw anchors that you can use to actually, like, screw it into a wall um, and then use it that way. But again, not going to do that. Uh, for one, I don't have a proper... Yeah, that's fairly sturdy. Okay, so... Now I need... All this trash out of my way. <laughs> Their instruction set was awful. <laughs> Just saying. Um, this was purchased um, off of what friends and I refer to as the Big River. Um, I don't even remember what the brand was, but it was something I found on the Big River's website. Because, of course, I did. I needed a solution because Inky kept getting onto the shelf and literally sitting on my African violet. And he has nearly killed one of them. So, you know, kind of uh, necessary. Needed it right away. You know, I can keep these uh, to hang items off of as needed. But for right now. Okay. My, there's the little bag of the screws and stuff. Okay, we're going to set this down beside us. I will have to uh, step away for just a few here in a little bit to get... Um, yeah, I'm losing words a lot. Uh, to get the screwdriver that I need to finish putting them in. It is going to be a Phillips head screwdriver, not a flat head. Um, these I'm totally going to put in the closet where uh, they were initially meant to go, and I'll figure out what to hang from them when I do. Uh, but for the moment, they're just going to be loose ephemera in my room, as are many, many, many other things. So, okay. I will be right back and
I'm back now. I ended up taking a little longer than anticipated because I had to go out into the garage to find the screwdriver because the Phillips head that we had in the uh, kitchen junk drawer was just not the right size. So, these are a fairly large screw head. I was right. That's going to be the perfect size. So, screwdriver, screw bit. This is actually part of my ratchet set. Well, sort of my ratchet set. I think neither half bought it because he couldn't find something he needed, but pretty much all of the tools in our house are mine. Um, because I'm the most likely to use them. So, okay. We're just gonna screw in to tighten down these screws. And then we will get started with moving things off of the bookshelf and then getting those things into this. Now I'm a, I will admit I made an error in buying this. I did not bother with uh, verifying the size of the bookshelf, so this might actually be too big for it, in which case I'll have to think of a different solution. Um, but for the moment, we're going to give this a shot, see if it works out. I'm thinking it will, uh, but there is a possibility it won't. So, okay, now that that's all done, let's go ahead and... Okay, that is the shelf of plants. Um, and I've got a bunch of different types on it. Some things that are not plants. <laughs> Mostly the shelf old plants is there to uh, keep things safe from animal incursion and ensure that the plants receive proper sunlight, which, given some of them are down, um, is not as easy as it sounds. However, some of those plants that are down are ones that actually thrive in lower light. African violets don't actually want a ton of sunlight. The succulents, on the other hand, they like the sun. So that's part of what we're going to be doing is getting him moved to a spot that's more advantageous. This is a neat little thing I got. Um, I was using it to store air plants, but then I got these uh, little champagne flutes. And I've been keeping the air plants in them since because air plants don't need a ton of water, uh, but mine get very, very set. He got to another of the leaves. Okay. Sorry. Um, but air plants, they do need water. Roughly once a week, they need to be soaked. Um, and so what I do is I fill the champagne flute with water and I leave it alone for a couple days and the water pretty quickly gets soaked up by the air plants and ends up either way I turn it it's not going to be perfect but it should be enough that is too tall so no, you can't go in there. However, what I can do, since I will be doing the grow lights, is I can put this over here. Because remember, the whole goal of this is to keep a certain rambunctious feline out of the plants. So you can go here, and then... My violet is short enough, it can go in, but we'll pull it forward so that it is less easy to reach of a target. Not 
course, the begonia is not going in this because the begonia is very tall and keeps getting taller. Instead, we're going to pull you over here so you're getting more light than you were. You're going to go here. You're just not doing very well, baby. Okay. The mini rose can go in here. And a little asparagus fern can go up here. He has not been getting nearly enough sunlight, so that might help. And again, grow lights will be going in. You three. You're too tall, but I've been meaning to cut you back for a while. Let's see. Oh no. That's magnetic, don't worry. trying to put most of them on this side so it helps weigh this one down so that I don't end up with things falling. So I can put you up here. Breaking this toy trap. Or breaking this toy trap. It still has not recovered from my other half's cat deciding it was a chew toy. So part of the goal here is to get more light to the plants that aren't getting enough. But also ensure that all of the plants are out of the reach of the rambunctious kitty. Doing better than I thought. You. I really need to repot you. This argument is not that good for you. That's fine. Go there. Now. I'll get the, uh, wires and stuff done later. For right now, we're going to go ahead and put these back here, because I like to keep my water bottle right next to the bed when I am sleeping, so I don't, you know, not drink enough when I wake up. Um, you can go right back here until I find a better place for you later. Let's see. Here. You can go back here. I'm eventually going to get more uh, water and things for those. You can go. And you've been in there? You could have, if, if I'd done it before. Oh well. I'm not using you to hold plants anymore, anyway. So. We just took our little things that we would put plants in if we had plants to go in them. Back here gives us a bit more room. Rex, you're getting moved over. Turned anyway. I could really, really should be encouraging Rex to go dormant. Um, because what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to with a Rex begonia, which is what Rex is, uh, cut him back at the start of winter so that he uh, he will grow more uh, once it's spring again. Not perfect, but you know what? It works, and it should, should, <laughs> should be in the operative term, keep in mind, uh, keep the kitten out of 
the plants, or at least protect them from him. Even if he knocks this stuff down to sit here, that's fine. It's not going to hurt the plants. I really wish I could have turned these a different way. But I'm sure I'll figure something out later. Um, if it comes down to it, honestly, later on, I can just hang these from the wall like they were. Uh, also an option, put them over that draw that uh, desk and just put stuff there. Okay. Let's get my magnet things back up. bit more secure than where it was now maybe it's a bit better still not great but we'll put it back here for now I'll worry about that later okay so for the moment we're done with that I'm going to inky stocking, which I've been working on off and on for, oh, over a month. Well over a month, actually. Um, I'm just going to put this up here. Right. Those have to go back to the garage, because I always try very hard to put things back where I got them from. Doesn't always happen, doesn't always work, but hey, I got something put together that is hopefully going to protect my plants from the kittens kittenish okay and you know i might find a way to extend that shelf just a bit later okay so we'll go ahead and just uh finish out the rest of the stream by working on the stocking i have gotten to the point where we're going to be turning it from a foot to something a bit bigger so if you notice one side is shorter than the other this is the taller side this is going to be what becomes the heel of the stocking so okay and i think i showed you guys i was doing that by uh doing different stitches but i'm gonna go just a little further to make that heel just a bit taller Doing doubles? Yeah, I'm doing doubles there. Okay. Three. I was considering doing a painting project today. Because um, I've got a paint your own garden gnome. Um, and I've got a lovely place to put him on the gnome shelf once it's done. So it was kind of like, I should totally do that. Uh, but I just don't have it in me today to fuss with getting the water ready and all of the paint pots out and, you know. Um, but I am able to at least do that one small project. Small. It, well, it is a small project. It's not the, okay, let's hang the uh, shelves above the closet door. Let's... It's not one of those. It, it's a fairly small, sedate project, so... And I'm happy I've gotten it done. Let's see. Yes, I, looks like I was actually doing half doubles all the way around the foot. Or the heel. Probably was doing half doubles so that it wouldn't have too big of a gap in it. Um, this stocking is going to be big enough that the kitten can be in it. Even though he's getting much, much bigger than he was. Um, you know, we're going to buff up to doubles now. Because I want this to be much taller. But... Once I finished his, um, 
over the course of next year, I plan to work on, not necessarily finish before Christmas, but at least work on uh, a stocking for the, well, two stockings for each of the other two cats. Um, probably going to do pink of some variety for Lady and blue of some variety for Figgy because Figgy looks very good with blues um, since she's a black and white. She's a tuxedo. And Lady, of course, being the magnificent floof monster that she is um, with the very dilute tabby, or not uh, not tabby, uh, calico patterning, she looks very refined and elegant and very effeminate for a feline. Um, and, of course, I know that pink wasn't always the effeminate color. It was actually the masculine color for a very long time. But, having been raised in a culture where it's viewed as the feminine color now, um, you know, it just seems fitting for her. Also, I recognize the, the stupidity of assigning genders to cats, but... I mean, they've got a sex, but not necessarily a gender, because a cat really can't understand the concept of this is... Uh, my sex and my gender are different. They don't even recognize, you know... Uh, it's anthropomorphism at its finest, okay? And I do recognize that. I need to do three more. Three more doubles. Switch to half double. Okay. I really should sit down and write this thing so that I can just repeat it every time instead of just futzing my way through and ending up with some very odd appearing stockings. Um, that don't match up, but at the same time, I don't really care, and I don't think the cats really care. The cats are just thrilled because it's going to have a catnip mouse in it, and uh, maybe some kitty treats, you know, that have been tucked inside it. Um, a can of canned food, because, you know, kitty. Here's uh, some canned kitty food, and that's all that they get for the uh, stockings. Okay. Okay, can we... St okay, good, it's still picking up sound. Sorry, my computer did something, and I'm just making certain I didn't lose the sound on the stream. Okay, we need to do one more, and then we will be switching to... Single crochet. Do that and then immediately try to do another half double. Thing is that's getting me discombobulated is the transition from half double to single. So, um, well, I don't think anybody's actually watching, uh, but for anyone who watches later on YouTube, because I do always upload these to YouTube, um, if you guys can think of anything that you would particularly like to see me do more of, I mean, you've seen me do watercolors, you've seen me do acrylics, you've seen me build small crafts, you've seen me... Um, modify things. You've seen me do a lot of stuff over the past, what, two years that I've been streaming? Year and a half? Um, but I would love to know what you'd like to see more of in the future. Do you want to see more crochet projects? Do you want me to get back to the, uh, the elephant crochet that I was doing and stop because life got in the way? Um, do you want to see more plant stuff? Um, painting, drawing, uh, watercolors, I've got an embroidery kit, I've got the embroidery, I've got sewing, I've got cross-stitch, um, uh, 
I have a needle felting kit that I haven't touched yet. So there are a lot of options. Um, do you guys want to see me play with clay again? So I would love if you would just put in the comments on the YouTube video or in the chat here, if anyone is watching, uh, what you'd like to see more of in the next year. Like, you know, is there any particular project you want, that I've started and you never saw me finish and you either want to see, did it get finished? Can I see the finished product? Or you want to see um, me finish it if I haven't, you know? Is there some project I've mentioned working on that you guys would like to see? Um, that's no sickle. So just, uh, you know, drop me a line in the comments or in the chat, because uh, I want to know what you guys want to see. I don't want to just do what appeals to me, even though I like doing what appeals to me, because this is my, you know time that I sit and focus on crafting for however long the stream goes. Um, so, yeah. But I would, I really would like to know what others would like to see in the stream. Let's see where it is, right there. swap to doing doubles. In other news, I just finally, I think I'm completely done with the giant project for work that had taken up almost all my brain power for the past couple months. Um, it was basically a uh, rewrite of all of the training materials for training people who are in my particular position, which is effectively an assistant manager. Um, and making certain that everybody who is in that position is on board on the same thing. Um, we went live with all of the training materials some of them have started using it immediately. Others have uh, not touched it yet. Um, but I realized on Monday night um, that I didn't quite like how things were flowing. It wasn't as tight and easy to find stuff as I'd hoped. Um, and so I then revamped the entire thing over what little bit of time I got on Monday and uh, half of Tuesday. And then I got to train a new uh, person for my position. And so I got to see how quickly, because we are having to rush her training, uh, because we went from a team of six to a team of three in less than a month. Um, so we are trying to build back up because uh, we are supposed to have me swapping hours temporarily to train everybody else on this particular uh, tool, this resource center, um, so that they can hopefully start using it consistently um, and they can see that, yes, it's a lot of work to start, but once you've really gotten started, you'll see that things get so much easier because there's a consistent process and the uh, the agents who are the ones taking calls will see that that consistent process means that they're going to be expected to follow certain things that they haven't been. And Therefore, it's going to make everybody's lives easier once things are all in place because the agents will start doing what they're supposed to, which means that they will stop having uh, 
uh, negative scores come back on them, things like that. And that should make things easier for them because it's going to increase their bonus. Because of course we get bonuses based on our performance, thankfully. I've definitely worked at places where bonuses were just the whims of the company. But it'll improve their bonus. It'll also improve how easily things happen for them if they're following a consistent process because it means that they'll be doing the same thing every single time, which means they're... Why did I just do a double crochet there? Um, anyway, uh, it means that things will be done the same way every time, which means it's easier for them to retain how to do it instead of floundering every time, that they're, they're having to do something because they haven't done it often enough. Also means that the number of calls where a customer demands a manager is going to go down because um, they're not going to have as many situations where the agent doesn't know what to do, is completely lost in the process, and therefore the customer does not feel confident in that agent. That's one of the first things that we saw was a reduction in the number of calls where a, super, where a customer demanded a manager or a supervisor um, and we were not able to fix things for the customer because somebody had mucked up badly. So it should reduce that to once everybody's doing things the same way that they should every single time. Which is the goal, ultimately. Let's see. So, you, you can see we've got that heel taking shape. We're going to do a little bit more because I want it to curve up. And then we will switch back to just the single crochet. Or maybe I'll go back to doing the up and down that I was doing for the rest of the foot. Which gave it a very interesting, like... As you can see, you know, this is going this way, this is going up and down. Um, eh, I like the uh, variety. I think it looks cool. So, but yeah, we're going to do just a couple, maybe only one or two more rows of the heel. Sorry, i got to stretch my legs out because I get sore if I don't. Okay. And here we go. But, yeah, that's what's been taking up my brain power for the majority of the past. And I apparently started it in late September. Most of the work was done in mid October. It's had some refining done frequently since then. Um, and then it got the full revamp today. I do think that I want to add a uh, kind of a glossary or a table of contents that will make it easy for agents to find exactly what they're looking for. Um, or, well, the people in my position, I should say, not the agents. Uh, but it'll help them find exactly what they're looking for so that they can just go straight to work once they've found it. I updated the uh, tracker that I use for keeping track of what who's been trained on what with the new thing. That was fun because I had to add all of the new stuff into it, and if I do a table of contents, I'm going to have to add that too. We, I just want to make certain that everybody's getting the exact same training, which is why I'll be switching my hours temporarily while we uh, take it live, because I'll be the one doing that part, too. Yeah, we're at the point where we switched. Are we at the point where we switched to books? It feels like we shouldn't be. I'm going to do... more 
let the half down, but then we're going to switch to doubles. Okay. This is why I should be writing this down, is so that I can keep track of when I do what swap. Instead, I'm just kind of comparing the rows and seeing, okay, what did I do last row? Which sometimes isn't as easy as it sounds. Oh, crud. I'll figure out why my camera now doesn't want to work. There we go. Sorry. I don't know why it does that sometimes where it's just like, okay, you've been streaming for a while, we're going to just stop. But annoying. I don't like it. Hopefully I didn't lose too much of what I was showing you guys. Thankfully it wasn't something that, like, was super vital. I mean, y'all have seen me crocheting. You know that I crochet. Nothing really big and super exciting there. Not like if I were like grabbing my plants one at a time and telling you, okay, this is this plant, here's how it looks, here's how you care for it, things like that. You can tell some of my plants aren't doing so well because I've been so busy with work that I've not been giving them the proper care they need. The poor roses are just struggling because I haven't been watering them as often as I should. I lost one of my air plants due to the not thinking to water them as often as I should. Um, Actually, I lost two to that, now that I think about it. One of them did have a pup before then, so I've at least been keeping that pup alive, and uh, it's doing okay. I have high hopes that it will regrow. The poor Venus flytrap had the incident where a lady bit all of the traps off, and then... I thought it was starting to recover, but then it got, I, there was a, it missed some watering too, and it was very, very sad. And then I realized it, and I fixed that, but it's still recovering again. So, I mean, I don't blame myself for it, because, like, life's been busy and hectic and crazy, and I get it. I'm the one living it. I should be willing and able to give myself grace, but I don't like the fact that my plants are actually suffering from my distractedness. Um, so there's definitely a, okay, I need to buckle down and fix this. I finally got my uh, journal for this year. I mean, I ordered it well in advance. I got it in like November, and I just haven't been using it because, well, it's not the new year, but then for like the first week and a half of the new year, I didn't touch it, and so I'm trying to get that fixed too. Um, big, not journal, planner. Planner's the word. Um, I still haven't sat down with the twins to get them to go through their planners and add like birthdays and stuff, important days, um, and I should, and I know that I should, and it's just <sighs> finding time, finding energy. Energy is the big one. So there's just so much. Like, once I finish this stream, I've got to go out to the grocery store. Thankfully, we have a 24-hour grocery store, um, and it makes it much, much more convenient for me. Um, but I've got to go and do grocery shopping because... When I went to the grocery store earlier today, I only got stuff for my kids primarily because I just hadn't been thinking about what do I need, you know.
though I have to go to the other one, plus the other one has the stuff that I normally get, so that's definitely a factor. I did make some New Year's resolutions. I think I talked about that earlier, but they're not big, you know, they're actually less uh, draining than the ones that I had last year where I was like, I'm going to write a short story every single day. And that was a bit much. I could keep up. I used to. That's the thing. I used to be able to, but I was also at that time, you know, not working in the workforce anymore. I was a stay-at-home parent right then, and that definitely made a difference in what I could do. Um, the fact that I'm working full-time and having to drive to get the kids from school, thankfully my other half drives to take them to school, so there is that. Um, it's just been a lot and I know I know there are people who do all of this they manage just fine but I I can't so I end up giving up things that I need to do things that I want to do in exchange and so that's kind of what the uh, stream is is giving me a chance giving me an excuse to do the things that I want to do during the week because otherwise they just I won't I won't play video games. I won't craft. I just don't have the energy unless I turn it into an obligation and that's not the way I want to do it. I don't want to have to do X, Y, and Z. But if I don't make it so that I have to and that others are reliant on me for me doing it, aka my viewers enjoy watching me do X, Y, Z, uh, so I need to at least once a week sit and play this video game or sit and, you know, do a craft for them, things like that. Uh, I'm sorry to be forcing y'all to be my uh, obligation, but it's at least meaning I'm getting to do something I enjoy without feeling guilty about not doing something else because, well, this is, this is an obligation I have. If I say I'm streaming, then everybody leaves me be while I do my stream. I don't have to worry about somebody coming to me because, well, so-and-so did this and I'm mad about it. And I don't know how to handle my own emotions because I'm a teenager. And therefore, I'm making you have to deal with it. Um, or oh, hey, this needs to be done, and while, yes, I could do it, I don't want to, so I'm going to put that obligation on you. Um, it happens quite often with my spouse. But, um, tomorrow, my spouse and I have to go out shopping for a new car because my van is not doing well and we cannot afford well we cannot afford to be without a van long enough to get it to a mechanic which is where we've been running into issues this whole time is we want to take it to the mechanic we had we've had the money to do so but the time without a car is just we can't because 
We have to drive every single day to take the twins to school. We have to drive to pick them up from school. We have to drive to the grocery store because where we moved is, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a store fairly close, but it involves crossing, like, at least two very busy streets, parking lots, etc. Not parking lots, uh, streets and intersections to try and get to it. So walking to it isn't a huge... Uh, it's not something we can do e simply or easily. And I do want to start walking again, because I have not since uh, September, I want to say. No, actually, I stopped walking daily when I went to California and got my top surgery. So not since November of the year before last. I do want to start walking again. This is a nice place to walk. You know, one of my kids walks periodically. Um, but I just... Where do you find the time? Where do you find the energy? Where do you find anything? Most of my walking gets done in stores. Because... Gotta go get the groceries. Gotta go get cat food. Cat litter. Depending on how tall the rows end up being, one to two more rows might be enough. Stitch I'm doing right now. These are just little singles. Yeah, well, then I'll swap to the half doubles. And sorry to gripe so much, by the way. I'm not meaning to, I'm just kind of laying out what's going on and why I do this stream, even though. I hardly ever get viewers, and that's okay. Like, I definitely do the stream more for me than for you guys. Sorry if you thought it was being done for you. <laughs> um, okay. So I think we're going to end at just after the hour mark. I'm probably going to finish this last row, and then I'm going to end the stream. Uh, I do want to thank those who came out tonight to watch. I do appreciate y'all because y'all keep me doing things I love when I otherwise would just not. These little bouts of creativity, this working on something, creating, making, they do center me. They ground me. They help me to feel human because creativity is a human emotion or a human pastime. It's something that we do because we are who we are. We are what we are. We are a species of inventives and creatives and it's just built into us. And if we fail to perform that, it will deaden our experience of the world. And I'm not saying, you know, well, anytime you're not creating, you're, you're doing something that is lessening your world. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that by creating, when we do, when we get that chance to create, you will, I mean, depending on what you're creating, you might get frustrated because it's hard, because sometimes it is. Um, you might get frustrated because, well, Mason can do this, and it looks really good, though uh, not this particular stocking. But, uh, you know, how come he can do this and I can't? But the thing is, I've been doing this for years. You know, I didn't, I relearned how to crochet when I was...
Sorry, I had to do some math in my head, and that's never easy. Um, especially when I haven't taken my meds. Uh, but, you know, I'd already had the basic foundations. I just stopped doing it. And so, you know, for me, this is, it's not something difficult because I did have that foundation. And if you didn't have that foundation, it's going to take you a while. You know, I can show you the stitches all the time. I can read you the steps. I can show you again and again how I do it. I can put out patterns that I've made. Uh, but that's not going to make things easier for anyone who never had that foundation to start with. So it's not you. It really isn't. You're not a failure. You can do this just like I can. You just need a bit of time to learn. It needs to get to where it feels natural in your hands. And that takes time. Like, I could, you know, It's not a case of you did something wrong or you're not doing it right. It's entirely a case of, I've been doing this long enough, it looks easy. Um, and that's a big part of why so many times, if I make a mistake, I'm like, okay, yeah, here, I want you to see. I make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes too. It's okay. That's what we do. We make mistakes. We learn from them. We go back and we do it better. Back to the single crochets. Okay. All right, just a few more stitches, and I'll be done with this round, and then we'll go ahead and end the stream. But uh, I really do hope you guys all have a wonderful new year that's coming up. I hope that it is a year where you are kind to yourself, where you're kind to others, where you give grace as it is needed where you say, I'm enough, they are too. And ultimately, I hope it is a year where we all can grow as people and find love and joy in crafting, in creating, in spending time with those we care about. Because those are the things that really matter. I hope you guys all get all of that with the coming year, or with the year that's now here. So, showing off what we got tonight. It'll hang like this. It'll look very cute. And thank you guys for coming out. I'll see you tomorrow for the gaming stream.